I realised over the past weekend or so that I have about 24, 25 Illumicrate and Fairylude Special Edition books on my shelves that I have not read. So let's let's do a video about some of them. <laughs> It's Becky and welcome back to my channel if you're new here. Hi, how you doing? Today we are looking at some of my Illumicrate and Fairy Loot collection. It's getting out of hand because I have so many that are unread and because we have a move up and coming, fingers crossed it all goes through, because we have a move up and coming I do need to downsize so just to make the move easier more than anything else because I don't want to pressure myself into all of these books um, when chances are I'm probably not going to read a lot of them anyway so not a massive downscale coming up, I'm just spiralling at this point because it's been a while since I sat down in front of the camera so I thought to ease myself back into sitting down in front of the camera let's try and read a couple of chapters of some Illumicrate books or Fairy Loot books, see how we feel about them and whether or not we will be getting rid of them. So you'll know yourself um, <laughs> if you've seen my previous videos, I do get Fairy Loot as full box and I do also get Illumicrate. Now Illumicrate I normally get book only, every now and again I will get the full box namely for these beautiful book pots because I used to be a full box member however I downscaled to book only when I realised that a lot of the items I was getting I wasn't actually using so if Fairy Loot could do a book only option that would be brilliant because you know I would be in heaven at that point but I have some books that I want to get to that I know that I will get to and hopefully enjoy and um, so we're not going to look at those ones as such we're just going to have a look at some of the ones that we've got to hand and see how we get on okay so to begin with we have five books all with different colored kind of different colored spread edges if we ignore the fact that there's three different shades of pink in here first off we have this time will be different by misha segura this one i believe is a contemporary style thing and it wasn't quite my style at the time of getting this and i did try and sort of sell it on but at the time nobody took it up so I've kept it to try again. We then have The Beholder by Anna Bright. This one I actually found at Barter Books over at Annex so this one is a second hand edition but it's really really pretty. It's got the sprayed edges. I believe it might be signed as well I think. It's got the original signature in there. I seen it, realised it was a fairly loot edition, had credit to use, had to pick it up. We then have a 2021 book which is This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. This one I'm quite interested in. Um, I have been interested in this one so hopefully this one is a one that I will keep. We then have The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski. This one, stunning shimmery blue edges. Um, I'm I'm intrigued by this one. I think the sun's coming through my window so it's kind of like making this one more defined is sort of shiny. But it's wintry, it gives me Havenfall vibes and we all know that I was not the biggest fan of Havenfall so hopefully this one is better. And finally we have the Illumicrate edition of The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. Now Cass Morgan is the author of The 100 which is now also a massive series in the UK or was a massive series in the UK and Danielle Page I read her work Stealing Snow. It was the first physical arc I got. I still have it to hand. It was a really good read so I'm intrigued about this one too. So let's just get into reading some of them and see what my thoughts are. Give me just a minute, we can talk it out Draw a line in the sand, then we'll cross it now I know my time is up, yeah, I've been too loud Give me just a minute, we can talk it out Oh yeah, you know I wanna mind, then just go If you said that you need your space Over and above, you get looking for my love But you find things around of This Time Will Be Different by Mita Segura and you know when sometimes you just get the feeling yeah that just happened with this book so 
We're following CJ who lives with her mum and her aunt Hannah owns a flower shop which is where she's an apprentice of. We've already been introduced in this chapter to what we know are to be sort of the enemy of this book um, which are the McAllister family but that's just been sort of mentioned in passing it's not actually been introduced as a character yet they've just been mentioned as people that they hate and in this flower shop they have basically had a customer in and picked a flower detail to him to help him go on a date. The whole thing about the flowers is that they apparently signify love. Now the synopsis of this one does say that Katsunyama's never quit but 17 year old Seiji doesn't even know how to get started. She never lived up to her mum's type A ambition and she's perfectly happy just helping out her aunt Hannah at their family's flower shop. Hannah believes each flower has a meaning and with her own round of flower magic she can help her customers achieve their heart's desire. CJ believes Hannah is full of it, but when it comes to arranging the perfect bouquet, she's finally found something she might be good at, a skill she might even be proud of. Until her mum announces she's planned to sell the shop to the McAllisters, the same people who swindled CJ's family and many others out of their property when Japanese Americans were sent to internment camps during World War II. Suddenly, a rift threatens to splinter CJ's family, her friends and their entire Northern California community, and for the first time, CJ is finding the strength to step up and fight. So, I think this is more of a contemporary side of things which kind of isn't what I go to Illumicrate for, unfortunately. So I think this one is gonna go on the no pile. Definitely gonna go on the no pile, to be honest. Next up, we have The Beholder by Anna Bright. It is quoted to have um, full of romance and political intrigue that had me captivated from the very first page. So we have our hopes held high for this one. I'm definitely keeping this one. This one follows a young girl called Sella who has waited her whole life for a happily ever after. Her mum died seven years previously to the time this is set in and his, her dad remarried this woman also known as her stepmother. He's the king, this is her stepmother. Essentially I feel like this is a Cinderella retelling kind of or like a princess fairy tale retelling. She's the only daughter, she knows the duties to find the perfect match, a partner who will help her secure the future of her people. Now that day has finally come. I'm not reading the rest of the, the synopsis because I've read as much as I know in the first two chapters, which is about the proposal. She thinks she has it all mapped out. She has it all set in stone about who she's going to marry, who she's going to, or who her father's court is going to propose to. Um, and they say no. <laughs> so they say no. I, I knew that but I also kind of forgot that at the same time so I'm intrigued to see where this goes. As far as I know from the, the cover I think she has to um, be sent away somewhere to try and find the love of her life or try to find someone worthy of betrothal miles and miles away like the other side of the world. Either way this has piqued my interest and I really want to keep reading so this is going on the keep pile. Next up we have The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski. This one is a beautiful signed edition. Like look at those pages. Beautiful blue and then the design on the back as well and it's got like the emblem on the front. This one I remember really sort of catching my eye. I did not meet my phone I do apologise. Uh, really catching my eye um, when I got it in the box and it follows a girl called Valeria who is the, one of the only survivors of the freeze. A dark magical hold not mountain unleashed on her valley on her village. Everyone including her family is trapped on an unbreakable sheet of ice and anybody who is on the run or escapes is basically killed um, or hunted down and killed. So she does odd jobs with her best friend um, who also escaped, who's her only reminder of home, but then he is brutally murdered. However, she finds out that he is still alive. So I'm very, very intrigued to pick this one up and get this one started 
fingers crossed I enjoy it. Where do the clouds go, baby, I don't know Maybe they'll be back, tomorrow we will know How many times do I have to tell you Early in the morning, you're beautiful too Early in the morning, you're beautiful too Counting the grains of sand upon the beach Somehow that number is always out of reach How can I tell you the way you make me feel All of my thoughts begin and end with you All of my thoughts begin and end with you finished the first chapter of The Bright and the Pale by Jessica Rubinkowski and to be honest I'm gonna keep reading this one too I'm gonna give it a go I think that there is a lot of promise in this one um there's a lot of trust in the secondary character from the main character which I know from my reading experience that that's gonna go downhill very fast um so I'm intrigued to see where this is gonna go we haven't yet met any other characters other than Valeria and her sort of like her boss almost who rescued her 10 years ago, took her in as part of one of the team when her when she fled her city. So I'm very intrigued to see where this goes. I'm hoping that I can pick it up soon, but I really, really enjoyed the first chapter. It wasn't info dumpy like I was expecting it to be. It was um, quite easy to understand, easy to follow, and the writing style flowed very well, so I'm gonna keep this one. Next up, we have This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. This was February's Fairy Loop Box book pick. It has really beautiful like deep pink sprayed edges and then this is on the cover so I'm really really hoping um, you've got the cover art as well as the, the flap. Um, so I'm really really hoping that I enjoy this one because it is a stunning cover. It's a stunning stunning edition. I love what they've done with it. It's beautiful. Um, it is also signed I believe. Like hand signed with the pen and the ink and everything. None of this you know printed signature stuff. Um, yeah. I'm just trying to find it. It's not going very well, is it? There we go. Um, so I'm very, very excited for this one. So let's let's see if I enjoy it. First of all, we have a map. I approve. It's a basic map, but I approve. I know you like you know me. You know that I know you. I know you like you know me. You know that I know you. Does the wind blow? Baby, I don't know But there is a place I can't tell you where for show Falling asleep to rain upon the roof All of my dreams begin and end with you All of my dreams begin and end with you I know you Like you know me, you know that I know you I know you Okay, so I finished the first chapter of this one. It was a little bit longer, but it still wasn't enough to fully grab my attention. So I am intrigued. I'm very interested in the idea of um, I thought I saw a slide on the ceiling. I'm very interested in the idea that this has of the, the girl trying to find out where her brother's been taken and the fact that she's doing trials and that kind of thing. I am intrigued, so I'm gonna keep a hold of this one as well. But if it doesn't pique my interest by about page 50, I will be getting rid of it because I've read 25 pages so far. But something interesting has just happened at the end of chapter one. So 
like I said, keep a hold of it. So next up we have The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page. This is the last book for this challenge. It's an Illumicrate edition and as far as I know it's a sorority but it's not just a sorority because they're witches and someone finds out. So let's see how this one goes. I've only just read the prologue which is literally a page and a half and wow. Okay, that's violent. Moving on. Like you know me, you know that I know you. Like you know me, you know that I know you. Even in my sleep, I see you in my dreams. Beauty so free, you're all I'll ever need. How can I explain the way you make me feel? All that I can say is I know you Like you know me, you know that I know you I know you Like you know me, you know that I know you Okay, so I read the prologue and the first chapter of the prologue really captured my attention but the first chapter was more of like a the parent not wanting to let go of their child when they go to college or in the UK it would be university so when they're 18 and I don't know how to feel. I, I feel like I could probably give this another chapter or so before I dig an effort and get rid but not, not a lot has actually happened. If it wasn't for that prologue I'd probably be very 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 bored um, but the prologue is the thing that kind of kept my attention if that makes sense so it's gonna go on the maybe pile. If you've read this let me know what you think because right now I am erring on the side of getting rid so let me know if you've read this yourself. Okay so there we have it these are the five Illumicrate and Fairy Loot editions that I have on the try a chapter challenge at the moment. Out of these ones I'm getting rid of this time will be different. I'm on the fence about the ravens and I'm keeping this golden flame, the beholder and the bright and the pale because they all kept my attention so so well. Particularly the beholder, um, the bright and the pale, uh, this golden flame sorry is a one that I'm going to potentially get rid of. I don't know I'm going to give that more of a chance but the, the, the top two definitely definitely keeping. Have you read any of these? Let me know in the comments down below. Have you enjoyed this video? Let me know in the comments down below. I might just spend my day trying chapters of Illumicrate editions this afternoon and um, I don't know but yes thank you all so so much for watching if you open that description box you will find a link to all of my social media channels including sort of my Instagram my Twitter those are the two that I tend to re use I have migrated on a story graph as well so you could still have me on Goodreads that's fine but I'm trying to use story graph more so you'll find me under Rebecca Reads YT for YouTube on there um come say hi give me a follow I will pop a link to all of these books in the description down below through my bookshop.org UK link if you are in the UK and would like to purchase them they will be on there for you um but yes thank you all so so much for watching leave me a like and a comment if you've stuck around if you've stuck around this long and you like what you see please click subscribe it would really mean a lot to me and I shall see you all soon with another video bye